it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 15 of my giant Iron Man inspired Hulkbuster suit. Check out last Friday's vlog to see me dragging it down to Nerdageddon Defcon 3 in Southampton. I actually found all the pieces go in my car if I take you to pieces, which is quite good to know, but still a consideration for designing the future pieces. So today's episode is going to be not that exciting, but it is quite crucial. So we're going to have a look around the back. So as you can see from a sideways view here, um, the front is probably what you've seen in the previous episodes, but you can see that actually um, the back looks like there's a massive chunk missing. So the aim of this was that the joints are all locked. I can step into it, which is why there's a massive gap at the back, and then unlock the joints and ha have basically have a walk around, controlling the arms and so on, then lock all the joints back up and climb out. And the original plan was that there were going to be opening panels that opened up at the back, which of course I haven't built yet. All I've built is the actual structure of it, which is this silver plywood frame. So um, obviously the legs are going to be a lot wider, which will fill in that part. But at the moment we've got the back here um, is basically totally open. And if I push this arm forward, you can see effectively there's just a massive hole in the back. So the biggest concern was building the back panel to open and how that was going to work. So uh, let me turn that around a bit more and we'll have a bit of a chat about that. So basically I've got these two boxes here which were to show that there will be some structure that comes up behind the head. These are going to get replaced with a proper frame um, and panels made in the same style as the shoulders as well as the other pieces. So what we really need here is some kind of panel that doesn't obstruct the arms and in fact where my elbows are on the joysticks or my hands are on the joysticks my elbows stick out quite far behind and we need to make sure that this comes out a substantial difference so it doesn't look like there's a massive hole in the back and will match the legs which are probably going to be twice as deep eventually and we also need to make sure we've got panels that open um, so I can climb in and I can shut them and they can be open remotely as well so the idea is I can open up all the panels from a tablet or some sort of remote control and I can climb into the suits and shut them all I'd also like to be able to open them to get out um, safety is quite important here, so we don't really want to use too many electric motors to open and close them. It'd be quite good if there's a fail safe, so they may be sprung open and pulled shut, and there's some way to unhook it so you can get out if power fails, especially if that's because the batteries are on fire. So, today I'm going to basically try and make a mechanism for um, a back section which doesn't obstruct the arms or my real elbows, uh, will sort of spring open. I think it's going to be in two halves, a bit like a gull wing door, and it's also going to replace this. It's going to have a, a pulley mechanism with probably some springs in it that opens it um, and some sort of mechanism for opening, closing it and releasing it remotely and when I'm in the suit. So let's have a look at some CAD. So here's the first part for the back opening mechanism. We can see this is kind of a pulley with a hole in and it's got some recesses there for two bearings to fit so it turns smoothly. There's also this channel cut through the middle which is for basically a piece of wood to fit in. And that's going to hold the frame for the back which is probably um, going to be a combination of 3D printed formers and foam for the panels. There'll be two of these panels which tilt and open away from each other. Next up we have these two plates which um, basically have pivot points, they'll be this way around with the pulleys on the front of them and then they have another pair of pivot points with recesses for bearings so that the two pulleys can tip away from each other or in fact towards each other which means that the um, two sticks that I just described will act rather like gullwing doors so they will um, stick out at an angle as the pulleys turn. Um, I've also got these two curious um, sort of round shaped recesses on each corner and um, that's to cable tie some bicycle brake cords into which I'll show you shortly so that I can have a double action of pulling the middle of the brake cord to turn the pulley and pulling the outside um, to basically tilt the angle of these plates. The last part is this of which there'll be two and these mount top and bottom on the plates so that they can hinge against the panel which is going to be made of a piece of plywood. So let's get those printed out.
I've mounted already the bearings into these, so I've pushed the bearing in there, which it spins on quite nicely. This is the other block which is going to be mounted on, and again that has holes for bearings. So in fact this side I've already mounted up, I've put the wood into the groove, which turns, and I've already mounted the bearings in the ends there. So I've got my two pieces which are going to be mounted on this piece of wood, which is going to go to the back of Hulkbuster, so that this piece can pivot. So this means that uh, this thing can turn and then this can hinge outwards um, and that means that it will miss the back of the arms as it comes up instead of being flat and it will give quite a good sort of um, ladybird wing effect if you like, a bit like gullwing doors. So I'm going to put the other bearings in and get this together. I'm also going to spray these pieces of wood silver and also need to cut a hole in this one to allow the bicycle brake cord to pull along that channel um, and pull through a hole in the edge. So let's get that sorted and then hopefully we can mount it on the rest of the suit. So here's our mostly assembled mechanism. So we've got these pieces that tilt and we've also got these pieces which tilt inwards. And this will be mounted on here which means that these panels will be able to tilt inwards and then upwards. And that means these sticks will just clear the back of the arms. Obviously I haven't built the back of the arms where the tricep shape will go. Um, but it does give it just that little bit more clearance. It's only a subtle angle. But that works quite well. So let's talk about how that's going to be sprung and how it's going to be activated. So basically what I've done here is added some bungee cord. So this black cord here is flexible, which holds the two so they pull together. And I've also got one wrapped around the pulleys, which pulls them upwards. So um, these tend to float how it, how it will um, sit there when the back panels are open. And then we're going to have some, some cables basically pulling around the pulleys to hold this down. So what I'm going to use is these bicycle brake cords. So these are actually for the front um, front brakes of a bicycle. And obviously this is a cable in a tube. So when you pull one end, obviously it pulls the other end. But what we need is a double action. So we need to be able to turn this pulley and we need to be able to um, control these, possibly independently. So the plan is going to be to attach this to the anchor point here and have this pull the pulley round, the inside, and then the outside is anchored to this, so when I pull the outside of the cable, it can control the pitch of the two sticks. Um, so unfortunately, we haven't got enough travel in here to actually pull the pulley. So I've got another brake cord, which is the type of cable without the outer. So we're going to basically cut this one out and put in a longer one. So let me get that sorted, and we'll see how well that works. So I've cut out the shorter cables, and I've put a little kerb in the end of that one, this is the longer one which I've inserted. Um, so this is steel cable that's wrapped around itself basically, so um, to stop that fraying you can get a little cap that goes on which you can get from a bicycle accessory shop, but I'm just going to solder the end there with a tiny bit of solder just to stop the ends coming apart. So we'll just let that solder take and um, wick its way up the cable. That's just going to stop um, the ends separating and any spiky bits poking out which will get really annoying. All right, so I'm all mounted up. Now I've got the cables here pulling down, but I've also fitted some pulleys in here that these go over so that they pull down the front of the suit inside. So we can see these things have now got end stops so they don't bind on each other quite so much. I probably need to take the corners off these pieces of wood. And um, of course they rotate round, so the effect of this is that if I grab the very metal ends of the inner cables and pull them, I can pull them back round and the first thing that happens when I um, basically let go of these or push or let them go upwards is that the back panels hinge outwards slightly um, and then they're able to rotate upwards opening the back of the suit. So the next part of the mechanism is going to be a some sort of solenoid release that lets go of the cables. So the idea is that um, it would be latched down and when I want to get into the suit I can remotely release the catch so the back opens. When I get into the suit I then manually relatch it and when I want to get out it unlatches or if there's an emergency I can manually unlatch it and then I'm not reliant on an electric system to let me out. But I'm not going to do that this time, I'm going to make another video in the future which deals with all of these other cable ends. So I've still got a pair of cables to release the ankles and a pair of cables that deal with the knee latches. 
check out some of the um, parts around three to five to see that mechanism. Um, some of those are going to be manually activated latches and I may have an electronic option in there as well. So that's actually all I've got for this video. Sorry this mechanism isn't very interesting. I know some of the other episodes have been more visually pleasing, but it is really necessary to the whole impression of the suits we're getting in and out. However, I have another bonus video coming this Friday on Hulkbuster dealing with the Unibeam. So make sure you check back on my Friday video this week.